I do now. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried it, but <laughs> no way. this man here will show me the ropes. What? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of the Black Party Show. I am literally absolutely buzzing to be joined by the legendary Sean Kavanagh. So Sean Kavanagh is an ex-Gaelic um, football player from County Tyrone. And this guy is literally amazing. Considered to be one of the best in the game. Five-time All-Ireland, three-time All-Star, amazing. Now, Sean Kavanagh is a successful businessman, an accountant, and uh, he actually has his own autobiography called The Obsession. So, what's the story? What's the crack, Sean Kavanagh? How are you doing? Welcome to the Black Friday Studio. Thanks a million. Delighted to be here. And, yeah, honoured to be your first guest, man. Oh, um, literally, I'm, I'm literally buzzing. I'm like, there's nobody better than me, to be honest with you. So. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but, yeah, I, I've no doubt it's going to be a huge success. So, just from the very offset, I, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. And I wish you the very the very best of luck. I've no doubt you're going to smash it. Oh, sound, Jerry. You're making me, you're making me all blush now, but you can't see that, but I'm blushing now, mate. But um, listen, uh, so before we start the show, basically, uh, I'd like to split the G with you. Can you split the G, Sean? I, I can't, but I know rightly you're going to show me how to. Oh, come here. I'll be sure how to split the G. <laughs> so uh, let's get the Guinness in now so we can actually split the G. Uh, look, I, I've been splitting G since so, like fucking forever. So, so uh, I mean, like, do you go first or do I go first? Or? Uh, well, we can go together and see us, right, what it's like, together. right? So let's, like, let's get the G split it. Here we go. That's a beautiful looking black stuff down there, bro. Yeah. Seriously, judging these pints right away. Uh, come, yeah, right? listen, it's, look, I know these pints are good. That's why I just wanted you to try it. So, uh, um, on the count of three, we're going to split this point and split the G. Do you, um, I'm under serious pressure. This oh, come, yeah. but, but no. there's more pressure in you because you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> right, a hand, a dos, a tree. Slunch up. No way. No way. We didn't blow. We both just blew the G. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were both. We a draw, wasn't we? It was a draw. It was a draw, you know, friend. It's like, you know what I mean? So um, I'm really I'm really happy to actually have you here. Uh, what do you think of the point so far, anyway? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's beautiful, yeah. I, yeah. I've actually only started to drink Guinness recently in the, in the past. Yeah, yeah. In the You've past never drank Guinness, bro? Past couple of weeks. Yeah, bro, yeah past couple it's of weeks. I've, I've been... I've been Dabbling about doing it for so so long, and I was actually in London a couple of weeks ago, of all places, at an Irish bar, and uh, Iron were playing England in the rugby, and a few of the guys, as you do, and on day of rugby's, er, the the order was just entire Guinness. No so way. I got sucked into the Guinness, the, <laughs> the Guinness team, and here I am here drinking a black fatty. <laughs> drinking a black stuff with a black fatty, right? I am. Um, so I have a couple of a uh, couple of questions prepared for you. Ah, yeah, uh, man, before absolutely. before I um actually go on with this question can you please tell my audience who you really are and and what you do basically yeah so look i i i've i've probably better known for for sports but um play, played for tyrone really since since i was 17 started out playing with tyrone in uh, late 1999 early 2000s managed to do quite well we won a few underage like uh, all, all irelands and, and graduated then to the senior team senior team throne hadn't won in all ireland ever and the the team i was lucky to to, to fall on to in 2003 won our first first all ireland beat armagh which was yeah. a, a big thing for me because <laughs> I, I i live in the moy uh, my wife's from armagh um I, I have a lot of i went to school in armagh I have a lot of connections so that was like a yeah a real sort of highlight when, when i was so young as well i was only 19 or 20 at that stage and kind of kicked on from there and um I, Lucky enough, I won two more, one in 2005, one in 2008. Boy. I was lucky to win a right, a right few sort of individual honours as well as part of some great teams, amazing teammates, played with some of the best players in the game. Peter Canavan um, arrived on a team with him and and everyone else then is part of my team just are some are sort of the, the legends of, of football. So just in, incredibly blessed, Paddy, to be honest, to, to be part of that. Um, I suppose as I saw that transition um, in my life, I was I, I kind of knew 
everyone in football has a unfortunately we've we've an expiry date the legs give up at some point <laughs> and, 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 and as that was happening i suppose i always i always saw myself i, I i'm an accountant by nature I, I i got lucky to get a first class honors from from university of ulster and 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 i, I was working as an accountant all through my football career and as as my football career was winding down i, I then had ambitions to sort of try and transfer that energy i had in football into business and and i i set up a set up my own accountancy practice uh that was seven years ago now seven years this month actually um we now have over 50 staff a number of uh, offices we do a lot of stuff across the uk and in ireland and uh yeah i'm still just loving the buzz the, the, the same buzz that i got out of the football i've now kind of transferred that to the business and yeah, I've, I've no, I've no, no plans to slow down. I just, I just love life. I've got, I've got four young kids. I have a great, great, great family. Uh, life's good, man. Just life's that good. That is interesting. Like you know, like just looking at your journey to where you are right now, that's actually amazing. Like, like as a young, as a young kid, what actually, what, what actually inspired you to start playing, to get into sports and start playing Gaelic football? I think the more as as I've gone through life, the more I've realised that it's it's that it's that buzz you get from competition. So no, yeah. even even now I'm forty one and you're only forty one. You, 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 you look about twenty two. I was a secret. I wish I was. I feel like it at times, but um, no. Uh, like uh, even even now earlier earlier today, I, I was out running uh, with a brother of mine and still get that drive for competition. So like I, I often wonder why I get into sport and. Um, as a kid, I played lots of sports. I played soccer in the streets. I played basketball. I played rugby. Um, so it, it, sport was always there. I played tennis as everyone does in the summer. Oh, we're over ten. We're yeah. playing Wimbledon <laughs> in the street. And but it, it's just that, just that competitive drive. Just, just that buzz that you get out of competing. And uh, I, I think even even the age I'm at now, I'm playing basketball. I'm back playing basketball. I'm back running with my brother. Everything's about drive and energy and. I suppose I, I think I would miss it um, if 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 a, if a day had passed and I didn't get some sort of a physical release. I, I think it'd be a, it'd be a sad day and it'd be a day that m m m sort of I'd be a little bit duller as a person. I, I just I just get a great great energy from being able to do uh, physical competition. It's brilliant. That is actually crazy because like sometimes when people have passion to do something, regardless of whatever they trans transition in their life in the future, that's fire. That goal. The reason why they started doing what they do. When they stop doing it, it's kind of like it's a sad day, like in another kind of way. Like, for example, let's say me in, as a person right now, I love to make people laugh. I like to entertain people. Like, I know I'm going to get to a certain age in my life whereby, you know, I can't do any of this. So just go around and do what I like to do. Um, like, you know, I believe when that day comes, I'll be really sad. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't do this. But the fact that I can actually still being able to actually like, you know, make people happy transfer laughter to people that's the main goal for me like the way you're the way you you actually like you know even though you're a very successful businessman right now you still like to get involved in your physical activities uh, man, yeah, that I, keeps you alive and you know the more the, the more i've kind of seen different facets of my life whether it be family whether it be sport whether it be business it's 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 very rarely about well, the, the best people i've come across they never talk about yeah, I, I, I won a trophy and that was the end of it. It's never the end of it, no. you know, and it's the same with business. And some people think, yeah, you go into business hoping to get money at the end of it. But it's not really about the money. It's about the process. It's about the team. It's about the energy. It's about the drive. It's about reaching higher and going more and, and, and enjoying it with a group of people, the camaraderie you have with it. I, 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 think, I think life's about that. I think sometimes people think that they go into it for a reason of a trophy or money or something but if you're doing it for those reasons i think i think it's the wrong reason i think mm -hmm. those are the almost the outputs from yeah. the good work and, and the energy and your drive you have and like it's yeah. something that that, that that i've seen in so many top class business people and so many top class sporting people as well yeah that's true because you're right it's actually not about the money because like you know like i used to think like you know it's all about the money. That's no. That was my mind. <laughs> yeah, that was no, my no, mindset. I, I know there's a lot of because, people because the reason that. why I thought it was all about the money because the older I got and when I had kids, I was like, damn, I have to provide. 
So money was on my mind. I was like, you know what? I have to provide for my family. I have to make money to make them happy. Oh, totally. like and, and like you never take away money. It, money takes away stress and pressures in life, and you, and you can't it, ignore that. It, but it does. You know? it, 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 it probably should never be the, the the main reason you do something. If if you can help it, obviously some people can't help, it and some people have to. I have to have to earn a living uh, for for a certain lifestyle and whatnot, but uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. Well, it's amazing to do something that you have passion about. And yeah. If, if money comes out of that, uh, it, it, well and good. And if it doesn't, sometimes it can come in different directions where you have uh, a great network of people or a great you know a, a great friend friendship group. It's you know sometimes th- things can happen uh, in different ways, and it's not it's not it's not about money. That is actually so crazy, right? So. Uh, <clears throat> So lessons from playing uh, careers that helped transition you to business, right? So, uh, like, how did how did your like your physical uh, career in sport transition into being an accountant? Like, how did that even happen? Yeah, look, I, I think I think I always had a, a a really solid sort of balance in my life, and, and that's something that I was I was just I think it was just naturally always had that, whereby. As a kid, even even studying, like my, my parents weren't educational at all. My, my parents my, my parents still worked two jobs each, and they're in their seventies yet. Um, my dad's a laborer, and my mom was a, a cleaner and a cook. And I think watching them and, and the sort of the hard work and nature that, that that they've had to do all their lives, uh, that, that was the greatest thing they could ever give me. So like I was working in a bar from I was thirteen or fourteen. I was working stacking shelves in local supermarkets. I always had a had a work ethos. And with that then I was able to work hard in sport and I'd be playing football and training to maybe eight, nine at night. And then whenever it gets dark or whatnot, you realize, all right, I can't play football or basketball at that time of night. Uh, and then I just used that same energy then to sit down and start studying. And, and, really? and I got, I got the, the grasp of studying and I enjoyed accountancy, enjoyed numbers, enjoyed working with other people and businesses. My uncle was a very successful accountant. I think I probably looked at his life and thought, yeah, it's pretty cool. I would, I would <laughs> like to almost be, be like him. So, yeah, I, I just I was able to then always have that balance when... My, my physical hard work uh, with the sport and the enjoyment I got out of that was was sort of capped out then I was able to turn it into my, my, my mind and, and, and put it to my studying and, and I got a great buzz out of it I have to say there's um, there was there's always uh, a real reward to be got whether it be passing an exam or winning a trophy it was a similar sort of adrenaline hit and, and, and buzz so I kind of had that from an early age and then as, as, as my life went on and I, I was obviously involved in high level sport and high level sports quite pressurized so being able to then flip my mind if you were worried about a big game or something i was able then to flip my mind into do you know what i'm going to go and do a bit of work and a bit of accountancy and, and you just you just go into a different mode but it, but it helped me relax randomly because you're able to sort of zone in and out of two different things and, wow, and, and, and they were able to complement one another and, and i'm still doing that to this day wow that's a powerful skill though to be able to do that like you know to, for you to be able to switch from that to the accountancy that's a very powerful thing because like you know how i don't know the the mental strength for you like you know to stay disciplined like you must be very you must be a very disciplined person for you to be able to like you know go from like you know playing gaelic i don't know do you guys do you guys get paid you guys don't get paid from playing gaelic yeah, no i wish you no wish you did no no, no we didn't and, and you know it's, it's kind of strange that i i was able through my career then i was yeah, we we play international rules, which was like an Irish team goes and plays an Australian team, and obviously Australian guys were maybe on hundreds of thousands a year. But there was something really proud about us then meeting them before and after the games and saying, you know what, I do this for my family, I do it for my my, my community, I do it for for my for my town, I do it for my county, I do it for my country. So you almost get a different buzz um, because you're not getting paid and, and it also so cool. also makes you really proud that, that yeah, you're doing it for like, your tribe, your people. That um, is unreal, man. But like, yeah, d- discipline was something that always was, was part of my DNA and, and I, I think I probably got that from my mum and dad. My mum and dad always worked two jobs, um, both of them during the day and then like dad was a bouncer, or still is a bouncer at night in, in, in no four way. scenes in Monaghan, yeah, and he's in his 70s and he's that half mad. Um, <laughs> but, like, I, I think I always had that. My mum used to work Late, late nights in, in, in the Randale and the Moy um, and I, I just always I just grew up with 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 work and, and discipline and always working hard but equally you always got reward out of that as well so it's just I think it just become part of my personality no way and like where did you study and what was it like yeah so uh, I, 
went to school actually uh, initially I, I did, did my GCSEs in Dungannon and St Pat's Academy and then I transferred across uh, to Darkside in Armagh so Dungannon's Tyrone <laughs> and, and then I went across and did my A-levels in, in St Pat's Armagh had a, had a great experience there uh, lucky enough I got straight A's in, in, in my sort of exams and, and then I went down to University of Ulster in Belfast and, and I got a first class oh, honours so degree out of there so I, I was always I was always very 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 privileged and, and very proud of, of, of all those schools and universities that I went to and I, I, I just I just loved it I, I just loved I played sport in all those places I, I did very well and I, I won a Macquarie Cup in RMA which they hadn't won one um, I think it was 1952 and, and I landed in in 1989 and we won it the following following six months later since I arrived the school so I think I've just been very blessed any anywhere I've gone and anything I've I've really been part of. Um, I've got I've got a real success and, and enjoyment from. So yeah, that just I've just, I've just a very moment. lucky life party. If I'm oh, honest, and wow. you must have, like Dungannon is a lovely spot. I have to say, it's actually like really great spot. So if you have to describe the Moy, how will you describe the Moy? <laughs> the Moy, uh, you know what? The Moy, the Moy, the Moy is great. As in, uh, even from, and, and it's quite sad because whenever I first grew, you know, grew up in the Moy. There was it was it was it was it was it was, uh, it was called a murder triangle. So I kind of <laughs> moved I kind of moved into the Moy with the sort of the troubles at its height. But I always had a great vibe off it. So I like I lived in in Coal Island um, uh, whenever was where my mum was from. And I moved across at eight or nine to the Moy and the Moy, despite the sort of the political sort of little bit of a political divide, it always just had a like a lovely homely vibe a lovely village even though it's probably now a, a more like a town uh, i still see it a, as a village you've got the lovely market square you've got the the water that divides throne and arma um and it's now become like a a, a nightlife hotspot at the weekend it yeah. always had we always had the, like the country dance with with the randiel um that that's always been there I used to work at that doing the bar uh, but ever since that now it's 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 now the the nightlife hotspot sometimes around ulster the tomleys is there and the auction rooms are there and pd's the is there yeah. saturday night friday night the place is buzzing so yeah like i'm uh, very proud pr- proud of the village and i can't see myself going anywhere from it <laughs> <laughs> and is the, you you kind of grew up in the moy so like that's where you kind of spend most yeah, of your yeah, life yeah, and my, like moy's home and have four young kids now that are connected into the moy football club four. and and uh and do our dancing and yeah like we just we just love the yeah we just love being being sort of culturally involved and and the, the actually my football club and, and the my community is is very much part of that Man, and what is it like being a father of four uh mad yeah is the best <laughs> way of putting it but i look no my, my, my wife actually is involved in business herself she's got her own sort of private medical clinic so she's oh, in business i'm in business um but the kids the kids are kids are amazing yeah like they're they're, they're, they're busy but with that same energy to talk about in, in business and in sport it's the same with them you know I, I just i just learned to whenever i'm with them i give them every bit of my energy and attention as well and so it's, it's incredibly special seeing 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 kids my eldest now is coming 13 my youngest is three so i kind of have a real range of of, wow. of of where they're at in their lives and seeing them grow and develop is just amazing wow. and how, do you, so how do you maintain like like how do you maintain having kids and do what you do and you miss it like how do you guys manage that lifestyle like it's yeah it's it's, it's manic like there's lots of lots of shouting in the morning and lots of shouting at night Paddy, but like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, you know what? It's uh, it's the kind of thing you get used to. You used to work that discipline whereby you just when things have to happen, they, they just do happen. There's never there's never a time. I don't go I don't go and uh, I don't go home in the evening and lay and watch soaps or I don't watch like if I'm watching Netflix, it's eleven or twelve o'clock at night. I, I just I've just got used to being busy from from you get up in the morning to uh, the, particularly when the kids go to bed at half eight or nine at night, but. That's it. Busy, busy's good. Busy's what I've always been used to, whether it's no been football way. and studying, or football and business, or football and business and and kids. I'm, I'm just always on the move. And is there like is there like sacrifice? Like is there like like for example, like I like my my missus don't work now. I'm the only guy that work in the family. I have two kids. I have four year. I have a five year. He he just turned five two days ago, and I have a two year old girl. And, you know, it's just this, the fact that I work all the time. I'm always out of the house. You know, she's at home looking after the kids. She doesn't have a job, you know. And I'm just kind of like, you know, the guy who goes out and come back, you know. And, and, like, you know, the odd time I get to see them and, like, I'm out again traveling around the country. But the fact that your missus have a job, you have a job, 
And like you know, how did the kids did they, did they barely see you guys or like I don't know? Yeah, no, no. Well, I, I I do the kids drop off in the morning. I'm really lucky with that I, I get I bring the kids to school in the morning and the evening. My wife quite often will pick them up, and then you get we have runs to do to dancing halls or football or my lad plays basketball. So no, like we're very fortunate. I suppose when you have your own businesses as well, oh, no. um, we're able to have that flexibility. We're the bosses, so no, you know we decide that. our own path. Sometimes, yeah, it's not always possible if I'm in England or my wife maybe is at a she's a clinic in, in Oma as well as our ma so sometimes we can be on the roads but we make it work you know and, and we're very blessed and you know we have grandparents that are close by as well and, and they're able to get called into action so okay I think you just get used to whatever has to happen Paddy happens yeah. like it's it's busy but it's great busy and and then uh, what is it like to watch sport and younger people um playing young yeah look look uh, um, I, I suppose I, I, it's 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 amazing to see kids kids develop in in sport as well, and that's 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 something. Like I, I was a young kid myself on stage and been able to see sort of. I I, I looked at all the mentors and things that I would have had uh, that that uh, looked after me through through my life, and and they were they were huge parts, not just in my sort of sporting development, but just my life development, and and I've used that sort of energy into my business as well. So. Thankfully now I'm able to. I'm, I'm coaching my. I have a son called Sean now as well. He's six, and no I'm able to do a bit of coaching now with with his little team. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm able to now pass on. I'm now the mentor, and hopefully, in twenty or thirty years' time, there'll be people like me that are able to say, Do you know what, like Sean Cavanaugh maybe played a part in, in in the development of my life as well. And and look, I, I think that'll be a very special thing if it does happen. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. So um, have you got? Have you, do you have any example of a? Uh, of a big mental hurdle you've overcame? Like, yeah, Paddy, there's, there's loads of hurdles and, and loads. Like, you know, I'm just thinking of the, the like myself. Like, I, I probably would have struggled to, to, to sleep and things a, a lot of the time. That, that's, that's something that uh, I could have been very anxious before big games and never slept. I always had this sort of um, battle almost with, with uh, n- not being able to sleep and then relating that to maybe not being able to play well if I didn't play well then the likes of my father wouldn't be proud of me so you know I've, like, like anyone in, in, in life I, I, I've, I've struggled um, I, I've probably come across sometimes quite quite confident and, and people sort of see that side of me where I, I'm maybe doing a bit of work with with with, with TV or, or radio or, or I'm, I'm maybe involved in business and people think that yeah that that's you know there's it's easy for him but no, I, I, I've, I've struggled the same way anyone has. I, I've, I've had to put a, a lot of work into it, a lot of disappointments. Um, I remember having my teeth knocked out as a 13-year-old and, and, no and, 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 and my two front teeth were gone. And that could be quite dramatic as a 13-year-old <laughs> as playing rugby and it's, it's, it's an accident. So my teeth have been knocked out about 10 or 20 times ever since. I've had Whoa. crazy injuries and surgeries on knees and ankles, shoulders. Um, yeah, I've had lots of disappointments. I've probably had as much disappointment in my life as I've had um, positivity, but you know what? I think you, you almost learn to use that disappointment. I think anyone who who, who just sticks at it and reframes things is, is able then to, to push on, and, and that's something I think I've become a little bit of an expert at, where um, I, quite often I come across people who don't agree with what I'm saying or maybe see me in a certain light, and it's not always a positive night light, but... Uh, you learn not to let that annoy you you learn to realize you know pe- people only maybe see a certain aspect of, of, of what you're maybe saying or, or who you are but uh, yeah I would sort of hope that that anyone who uh, truly knows me and, and gets the time to know me then realize that yeah I struggle the same way anyone struggles and you have to deal with a lot of a lot of difficult moments in your life and but yeah with, with that uh, I'm able to the, the good moments then are all, are, are, are all the better because you know you've, you've had to overcome things in your life that, that maybe weren't so weren't so smooth. And I think everyone's got a story uh, to tell on that front. That is crazy. And when you go through this kind of like, you know, struggles, how do you how do you compose yourself? How do you bounce back? Do you have any like ways you, you do that you bounce back and get back to your normal self? What's the what's like what's this? What's your yeah, way of like, uh, staying uh, positive and, you know? I just reframe things very quickly. I think I think I've always been very. You talk about bounce back. I think I've yeah. always like. I remember I had a really sort of low moment that, that I spoke about in, in a, a book I done a few years ago, whereby I was captain. It was two thousand fifteen, I think it was, or I was captain of 
thrown um we played in an all iron quarter final or 16 was it and we'd head in the quarter, quarter final we lost um i got sent off two yellow cards uh, it's not a source but i got sent off and we lost by a point and that night um i got dropped off in the moy square i left my phone and wallet and all in, in the car i was in i just said i was going to go for a walk around just to clear my head and i end up walking for seven or eight hours aimlessly in a pair of shorts uh, i got picked up by a taxi man in dungannon at about one o'clock in the morning it was on saturday night one o'clock in the morning I, I i had walked about probably guess about 15 miles on my own in the dark um but uh, it was the shame i felt from losing and from blaming myself i didn't want to go home i i, I felt i'd let down my family i'd let down my, my, my wife I'd let down my my father um but yeah probably a day or two later i was back training with my club and i was able to flick that switch because i just reframe things very quickly i just go yeah I've, I've had you know that darkness and that sadness but very quickly i'm able to bounce into uh look that's happened i can't change the past i just have to now work with with what's going on in the future and yeah I, i'd say that's probably been one of the best things about me is that i'm able to do that quite quickly while other people will will dwell and hold regret and and, and things for quite a long period of time i've always been able to turn things around very quickly as in a day or two Wow, that is crazy. Just like what we were explaining, what we were talking about earlier about, you know, going outside and taking the fresh air. And so that book, like the fact that you actually, wow, six, eight hours walking, like, bro. <laughs> it was a long in, walk. It was, it in <laughs> the dark, like, you know, that kind of way. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy because I was, th I was thinking, I was thinking in my head, like, if I have to, like, if I, if I'm thinking, if I'm going on a walk, I will know walk is long when I know, like, literally, like, you know me, man. I, I will be like, okay, I think it's time to turn around. It's dark, you know, that kind of yeah, way. Yeah, I, I had built up a picture in my head. That that I I had let let my family down. I had kids, I had two or three young kids, and my wife, and I, I, just in, in my head. I think that's what maybe a lot of people's struggles are. It's something that in their head, they you know, in that moment, they they maybe can't see the full perspective. And and right in that moment, I couldn't see the full perspective because my wife's from Armagh, she didn't really care whether Tron won that day. But, you know, the reality was in my head, all I could think of is she'll not be able to show her face in the community and my family will be sort of blacklisted in my own community because it's about it's about that tribal that that that, that my people thing and uh that yeah, in that moment unreal, I, I, I couldn't i couldn't get my head around that that people could see it as a sporting occasion and a game of football and that in my in that moment i thought i've let everyone in the county thrown down and particularly no my own family and friends i i I, re i relate to you so much on that because i remember one time there was they were doing a they were doing a comedy festival the boomers comedy festival they had a few comedians to come in and do like a competition and whoever win wins this competition gets to perform at the boomers comedy festival this was years ago i remember telling my mom my dad and everybody and i was like you know what guys I'm about to go do a competition. I told literally my whole community back then in Blanchestown, I'm doing a competition um, for the Boomer's Comedy Show. And I was ready, I was prepared. I knew I was going to be good. It was going to be an amazing show. I went on the show and the first, the first act performed, second act performed, third act performed, fourth act performed. I performed. I got a lot of laughs. It was crazy. A lot, a lot of people laughing and everything it was great. And the MC came up and started calling up the winners for the night. And he goes, um, so the third... Winner for the competition goes to, bro. I was like, okay, fair enough. They didn't call me. I might be second guy coming in. The second guy that's going to be performing the Boomers from, um, Comedy Festival goes to, my name wasn't called. I was like, oh, something's wrong here. If I didn't come second, I'd like, come home. I was like, there was a guy that did really well. I was like, ah, sure, he's going to come first, definitely. And the winner of the Boomers Comedy Festival goes to Nikita. The guy that I was thinking I was going to win didn't even win. It was this random girl that Some won. Other, yeah. And I was like, what? Wait, <laughs> this must be rigged. What? And I was, that got me. I was, I was really down. I literally, I didn't do comedy for a long time. I took, I like, it kind of like, because I, I, I came home. I know my dad was being positive and, you know, they, they were being nice to me and they were being all, but in my mind, I'm like, they just maybe saying that just to sugarcoat the situation. But I just like had that feeling of like, you know, I let, I let them down. And stuff like that. And I was really, really like, you know, I was really into my feelings for a long time. I did not I mean, do stand-up comedy, bro. I literally, I, I, I took that anger of not performing anymore. I took it into doing videos. 
you know, doing like, you know, going around and just do my dust. That's cool, because right now, then you obviously still carry you, that with you, you and, and use it as, as something that's positive. And that's yeah, what I, that's you, what I mean about that you're able to reframe something you, where I think everyone thinks that whenever something bad happens, you... It, it necessarily is a bad thing but sometimes it can be a good thing sometimes yeah. you just have to look at it and go yeah it's happened i can't change it now i'm gonna i'm gonna put it down as a bad experience and i'm gonna use it for positive use through yeah, the rest of my life exactly. and, and like I, I i i can actually remember and sometimes you hear this in sport but i remember the first trial i ever went to with throne um I, I was a fairly young kid i was 16 i was trying out for the throne minor team we, we had a we had a we had a trial game I, I I genuinely played one of the best games I've ever played in my entire life. And I got a tap on the shoulder by the manager at the end of the game and he said, Sean, you you played well, but come back next year. You're not you know, we're not gonna take you uh, and it, it I, I believe it was probably down to my age or something. I was quite young, but I, I was cut from the team after playing one of the best games I ever had. And I remember remember holding that thinking, how could that be the case? But probably a bit like you. Like, there's not a bit of subjectivity with whether someone plays well in a game of football or whether someone laughs at, at, a, at a comedy night so yeah it, it, it i held that i had a little bit of anger out of that as well for a while but i still remember it i still used it as probably one of the best things ever happened to me yeah. because I, I was able to go yeah well, look i'm just going to go a bit harder and try a bit more and i just 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 use it to motivate me through life. yeah you kind of like you you, I, you, I, you use that energy you channel it to, to something something more positive or more like you know effective because that's that's my own way anyway of kind of like you know overcoming some certain uh, like a, a setback or a sad situation i use that energy and i kind of like you know what whatever is happening to me right now wouldn't last for long like when i when i when i when i was really down from that situation i could easily just you know just give up everything go back to the cinema that i used to work in blankstown and cinema world and just keep doing what i love to do but i say you know what now nah, that same and because it's Comedy is all about entertainment. Make like I said earlier, I like to make people happy. It's just something about me. I don't know. I think that's and that must be fulfilling. As you well. know, you it's, it's a, a yeah, it's a gift. It's a gift from God. I just love to make people smile, regardless of where I am, whatever I do. I remember the first time I got my Irish citizenship, we had to go to this conventional center to swear an oath. Did you have to split the G? I wish I did. <laughs> I would have split the whole G, you know, that kind of way. And I had to go to this um, conventional center and kind of like, you know, kind of like, you know, uh, swear to, uh, to get my Irish citizenship. But while I was there, I actually got the opportunity to get us. I don't know how this happened. I got on stage and I literally started making people laugh. This was a serious event. There was a lot of guardies, <laughs> police there, you know, commissioners there. And they're like, you know, I just had to like, I just, they just like, they were like, who here wants to say something? And I had my hand up and they had, they called me up on stage and there I was literally having a crack with the people. <laughs> it's just my, it's, it's my blood. It's my DNA that's, that's to nice. make people laugh and make people happy. But when I got rejected from the, when I, when I did not win the comedy show, I channeled that energy to, to just, Start doing funny videos, make yeah. people laugh on camera. I didn't win that, but you know what? It's okay. I'm gonna start making people laugh on social media. Yeah, that's, that's you know that kind of way. Like so it's it's kind of a thing. Um, so uh, what's your what's your advice for someone starting in sports business? And 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 business in general, yeah. or and like sport in sports or business. What's your advice? Someone who starts yeah, sport. Uh, do you know what? Like it's it's not too dissimilar to to what you're saying there. Like. I, I, I work with a lot of businesses and I've been involved in a lot of sporting teams and it it, it comes down to like it, it it's, it's it's persistence and, and I, I totally believe that because n nothing happens unless you're willing to accept the failures and you almost go from one failure to the next but the, the beauty about probably business uh, in particular but also in sport is that you've always time to crack things as in like there's no finish line there's no finish line in business so if you make a decision today and it doesn't work out it doesn't mean you, you know you have to stop you just make another decision you, you, you try something else and the more you try and try and try the more eventually something works and and i i, I, I totally believe that and in my business and, and in my sporting life i, I probably kick more wides and made more bad decisions sometimes than than good but whenever you find something good then you're able to kind of zone in on that and, and build it out so it's, it's that acceptance like some people think there's like a magic wand where yeah, yeah like I, I i meet hundreds of business business owners um all the time with thousands of clients 
And I keep thinking to myself, I'm going to meet one that has the the magic wand that 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 is knows everything about business and knows everything about being successful and i've yet to meet one patty you 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 meet lots of people that are very good at sales or they're very clever in a technical way or but the one the one sort of consistent message is that they're 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 persistent about what they do they're not going to give up if they take failures they just keep moving on and moving forward and the more you you do that, the the more things start to work because uh, it's it's stopping trying things. I believe is is what holds most people back, and and that, that, that I totally understand that can be because of money or because of circumstance. But the successful people that I've always met are the ones that never give up. Oh, they, 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 they work harder, they work longer. I remember meeting Peter Canavan, who's a, a Tyrone idol and an idol of mine growing up. And genuinely, I know you hear these stories. I've heard them about Ronaldo and I've heard them about Michael Jordan in basketball. But the first time I met, met Peter Canavan, it was in Dungannon, St. Pat's Dungannon. We were training, doing a training session on a Sunday morning. It was a frosty sort of December morning. And we were training at like 10 o'clock in the morning. And we arrived down to that training pitch at, say, quarter to 10. And Peter Canavan had already been out for half an hour kicking kicking points. But people looked at Peter Canavan and still do in Tyrone and think, oh, he was so gifted. Of course he was gifted, but he was gifted because he worked harder than everyone else. And I've heard those, I've heard those stories about, uh, about business people and about the best sports people in the world. Nobody does, nobody's successful unless they're willing to work harder than anyone else, unless they're willing to work longer, unless they're willing to take those failures and and and, and not not hold that anger and just keep moving forward and forward. That is amazing. So hard work basically beats talents, regardless of what all it is. Day, all the time. That is all so will you say will you say Peter Canavan is someone that influenced you? Like who's the most influential person that actually shaped you? Who did you ever look up to like? Yeah, like uh, from a sporting perspective, uh, I always looked at, at at Peter, and I always looked at there was another guy, Anthony Tohill in Derry, who who sort of was a I'm quite tall as a person and played that sort of a, a role where he could sort of influence things on a football field all around. But if I'm totally honest with you, you know, the person that probably influenced me most and still does in my life is my dad, and and my dad oh. wasn't. Uh, He's not a business owner. He, he's he's not he, he, he's not wealthy. He's a laborer. Um, and he's a bouncer. Oh, um, hey. but he, 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 to this day he has got an incredible work ethic. Uh, he was cleaning out my yards last night at eleven o'clock at night. I was trying to get rid of him out of the house. But it's that it's that energy and that that drive and that motivation and that uh, and and. I think I think that's what's what's made me successful and the person that, that I've had. I, I took that, that that hard work and that drive off him and yeah, he still has it in his seventies and thankfully now I'm in my forties, but I've I've been quite successful in anything I've done and I do believe it's because I, I've watched him do that all all his life. I'm never going to tell him that either, and, and he probably doesn't watch podcasts, so he's, he's unlikely to watch. <laughs> he the, better the, watch the Black, the Black, Black Body podcast. Show, but <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, I, I do believe he was, he's just a massive influence on my life. Oh, that's pretty cool. Like you've you've actually mentioned about forty and your age and stuff like that. And I can see you're looking well for your age. What's your diet like? What what's your eating style like? What do you like? How do you eat? Yeah, look, I, I think I've been very very lucky because because I was involved in, in high level sport for the most part of my life when I was eighteen. I was playing for Tyrone and, and I played right through until I was 34, 35 and I think I think I just got used to eating good food so yeah when, when my wife sitting at night eating the cheese and onion sandwiches or whatever she's eating <laughs> I, I, I'll always be on something a little bit a little bit more nutritious so yeah no I, I do I, I eat well I eat well look after myself it's it's porridge and eggs in the morning it's 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 it's, it's a nice meat and, and pasta and veg for for lunch or dinner or whatever it is so yeah look I, I do look after myself I, I enjoy a treat or a Guinness or a beer and uh, whenever whenever the you can't be a good Guinness there's, there's, there's iron in this right yeah, you know that's not bad but yeah whenever, whenever the opportunity comes I surely enjoy the crack and enjoy enjoy the good things in life but yeah I, th- I think I've been very lucky and I also I would I would notice if, if, if I'm not eating well I would notice then that my energy's down and feel a little, little bit a little bit lethargic and stuff so yeah I'm just very lucky I, I learned that skill from being involved in sport of if I eat well if I sleep well if I hydrate well I've got energy and to give to everything that's going on in my life okay very cool and um now we're going to get to like the deep part right so um in 20, 2020, you had a bit of a controversy in 2020, right? So can you explain up here in the UK COVID comments? <laughs> it's hard to beat that. Yeah, look, you know what the mad thing is? Like, 
I, I, I'm one of these guys. I, I, I was never. I'm not not political. I've never been political in my life. So I, 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 I never. I, I don't. I didn't understand. I to this day, I didn't understand a lot about like the history of Ireland and Northern Ireland and and, and Great Britain and things. I, it, it was never because I, I was always out playing sport and because I just one of these guys I always look forward. I, I just I, I suppose naturally I never I never looked back too deeply at history and nor was I ever into 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 the politics thing. So uh, yeah, so we were doing a a podcast with with RT during COVID and you know everyone was in Zoom. It was it was on Zoom. It was it was on a Friday morning at like seven or eight o'clock in the morning because we were doing it before before we work and things. So sitting there in an office on my own, sort of half slept at, at half seven in the morning and guy Pat Spillane from Kerry who would be very very well known sort of GA pundit as well and great crack he's now retired from GA er, from punditry and RT um, but yeah he, he was he was talking about he, he lives down in a place in, in Kerry on the sea and how, how he, he he was being restricted to walk along his beach which was cl- quite close to his house and, and there was a, a two kilometre restriction zone that the guards were, were sort of stopping so he was explaining about how he was restricted uh, to, to walk along the beach. And, of course, I'm sitting in my head and it, it, I, I'm always talking in, in a currency lingo because we've, we've offices in, in Ireland and we've offices in, in, in England and, and all across the UK, really. I'm always talking tax legislation. So tax is, is UK, Ireland, UK, Ireland. So whenever I hear Pat talking about Ireland's response to COVID, and I'm not half slept, and I'm not thinking. I, 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 I throw out, well, Pat, you're doing that down in Kerry, and you've got that 2K restriction, but up here in the UK, thinking up here under UK pandemic uh, legislation or whatever it was at that time, the, the, the Sunday night used to watch Boris Johnson telling us how what we could and couldn't do. But, of course, I went on to kind of explain about, yeah, it was all to do with the COVID response, but... The, the, the great guys in social media just, just just managed to clip those four words or five words up here in the UK. Uh, and it's very bizarre to me because at the time I never thought anything of it whatsoever. It was actually the, the podcast was recorded on a Friday morning and it wasn't released until the following Wednesday. And I remember like people saying to me, oh, how'd you get on? And I said, yeah, great. It was great crack. No bother. And then all of a sudden on a Tuesday, it was a Tuesday or Wednesday night at like 10 o'clock and my phone started to blow up with all these people on Twitter, I was on Twitter at that stage saying about, ah, oh, Sean Kavanagh is a disgrace, uh, he's calling um, Ireland the UK, and I'm going, oh, hold on here, what? Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. And, and ironically, I'd done a book a couple of years before that that I talk about the proud- proudest moment I ever had was singing around the vein, captain in Ireland in Australia um, when I was playing international rules. So you know, it was quite bizarre for me, always thinking of myself as, as Irish, but all of a sudden getting attacked by everyone around me for, for, for saying a, a COVID response up here in the UK. So yeah, at that point, uh, I, I reached up to the top right of my phone and I just clicked, I think I got 20 something thousand followers on Twitter and just, I just clicked delete. And, and you know no what? No way. I, I, I've never, I've never, I've never looked back. Uh, it is probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in that I realized once I did that, I kind of took control a little bit and, you know, uh, look, uh, currently I'm, I'm not on any social media except for LinkedIn. I do it for business purposes. But I, I know I was get, getting sucked into the online world. Sometimes can be a murky enough world. And, and you end up reading other people's problems and reading a lot of negativity. And ever since I did that, I realized, you know what, life's okay. I might be missing a, a bit here and there around whether I'm missing a bit of news here and there. And sometimes I miss a bit of what's going on in the world. But what I was able to do was 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 realize my mind was so much freer. I didn't I didn't I didn't have to listen to problems. I didn't have to deal with people that maybe didn't like me or didn't like what I was saying on TV or didn't like what I was saying about their 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 county or their team. So, yeah, ironically, again, it's not all these things at the at the time. It was a mishap. It was something that 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 went wrong that I never intended to to come out like that. But I probably look back at it now and I say, do you know what? It, it, it's actually in the long run, it's probably helped me because I get out of that world. And thankfully now I'm one of these people that, that doesn't get too annoyed with anyone sort of says about me because of that. Because I kind of, you grow a thick skin and, and the longer, the longer you kind of go through life and the more you've you've seen a fair bit of sort of abuse being flung your way. And, 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 I, and I suppose as a footballer as well, I was always in the spotlight. You're always being judged and always being rated. So I think I just got used to... Uh, people saying good and bad things about me and, and 
I just realized it doesn't really matter. I can't control that. And at that moment, I, I kind of took a little bit of control back in my life. But yeah, I totally regret it as well. And, and, and I'm slagged about it constantly by my family, <laughs> friends and family and everything. So you have, you have, you have, you have, to, you have to see the fact. Uh, so that's, that's, one, that's one thing, that, that's one thing I, 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 uh, people say about the Irish people, right? Regardless of what it is, right? If they will forgive you, but they will never forget. They will never. <laughs> ever well, you know what? I, I, I'm constantly reminded about every oh, time trust I'm me. the crack, and I totally embrace it as well. So it's a bit of crack. Oh uh, no, it is. It is because I, I relate to you a lot because I like you know the way you deleted your Twitter. I can't delete my social media because this is how I live. This is my way of getting my income is through social media. Totally if not. I delete, if I delete social media right now, I'm just gonna go back. To, I'm gonna go back <laughs> to a regular job. That's what. <laughs> Back with the DLA, that's what it is, baby. <laughs> but um, it's the, like I, I relate to you a lot because I've been through similar situation as well, whereby I've said some certain things and the social media, what they do is they will take that certain bit of the negative things and they'll put it and make you look make you look really, really bad. And it's kind of really sad because this type of situation actually breaks you mentally. And people don't really see that. Because like, okay intentionally your 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 aim is to like you know do something good and you know um spread love positivity and joy but you get to somewhere in your life that you say something and maybe somebody don't get along with what you just said regardless of knowing the fact that we humans we're not perfect nobody is perfect and here by the way that's what that's what makes life so interesting do you saying, like if we were all saying the same thing we nobody would want to watch anything Ex exactly <laughs> and nobody's trying to embrace our indifference everybody wants to just pretend and be fake and so they can be liked but people that are real that are very very like you know themselves authentic people tend tend not to like them so like i i really understand where you're coming from and like so yeah, like yeah, you only have to look recently and uh, uh, the kate middleton stuff and, and yeah there's people jump on things and make assumptions Do you see that as well? That's they, they make assumptions based on what they think might be the case but the more you realize that, that was actually crazy that yeah, was actually the more, the more you realize that people they just don't take time to to look at the wider picture and their and their perspective of other people's lives and you know every everyone goes through tough parts of their life no matter whether you're royal or whether you're you're someone like me or someone like you everyone we've all got struggles in our lives but yeah i don't think anyone really takes enough time to to kind of put things into perspective to, to, understand, to understand that it. and i think yeah. it's just the i think it's just social media in general because social media give everyone the power the easy way to judge like dislike yeah, comments yeah. you know you see people commenting negative stuff and the w people don't understand that the word of power is powerful like see to me i see i see social media as a realm of transparent energy like for example, like you, you might not, I might not like you, or you might not you like me. You probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm bringing you here, and I'm just joking, you know. And if I want to say something to you, because I don't, I, I don't, have to, I don't have to say, I don't have to say that. Um, oh Jesus Christ, my first podcast, I'm actually, ruined, <laughs> I'm literally ruined on my phone. So, like you know, sometimes I don't really have to like you to, to I don't have to say something to your face just because I don't like you. I can easily write it out to you, a. Hey, um guinness factory i think your your product is not great i don't like it i'm never drinking it again send now the guinness factory will read the comments and like oh yes you've literally transferred your energy through social media whoever is reading it has read what you just said and that's sticking to their subconscious mind and then they will start thinking about what you just said about them and that goes through their mind all the time and now you're actually killing that person through your words and this is what happened with social media yeah, and you get time. and you know what you see it like i i work with hotels i work with different businesses that uh, because of the monster that is that exit of amazon everyone is now is rated and reviewed no matter what's happening you're you're judged and and i suppose people has that power where they can go on and and i don't know whether they get a kick out of it or whether they believe the same trying to get the voice their opinion in some way or like, mad way but maybe being negative is, is the way in which they believe they can take control and power over a business and, and maybe review them negatively and, and they don't realize the consequences the same whether someone says something online about you or me or my family or something they don't realize the negative knock-on that that has where my dad holds anger with it or my kids are standing in school and they're realizing hold on my daddy's getting criticized and, and for something that might be nothing in, in it at all and so I, I don't think people sees the 
the, the, the wider impact you're talking about, that sort of negative yeah. energy, it sucks so much out it's of society. Actually, it's actually, it's and it's sad that, you know, because it, by and large, people are good, you know, people are great. And, and when we all come together, it's, it, it's, it's amazing. But uh, sometimes in social media, it just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't play out like that. I don't personally. know, like, but who gets a kick out of negativity? Like, who, who, like who, who, who in their right mind would think, you know what? Let me just have a good crack today. Let me just say something negative. <laughs> like who? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Like I am. I personally, I would have. Like if I don't like something, I would have go through that energy of writing something negative about that certain product. I'm just gonna yeah. be like, you know what? I don't like it. Fair and enough. You know what? It's sad because people. Well, definitely me. I'm not so sure with you, but uh, definitely me. I can remember the time before phones and before social media, and I suppose I, I I'm able to put things in context, but. I think now of my kids that are that are growing up and all they know is Instagram and TikTok and judgment yeah, and yeah, reviews yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you know that's that's why a lot of young kids struggle with this with, because they they don't realize that sometimes what's on that social media world isn't real life because I remember the time when there was no social media world and real life was real life so <laughs> I, th I think I think that was the best time ever it was great you can go oh. out as many Guinness as you want and do whatever you want <laughs> and nobody judged you <laughs> that was the best time ever man social media and, and was just bicycle you forget what you did the night before and nobody, nobody, you. nobody had any evidence no it was just the best time. like you know there was, there was no negative it was less ne like if anybody didn't like you back then they would literally kind of like you know say it to your face back then yeah. Not, not like nowadays where, where we use social media and literally fight each other right now. Like years ago, there's not like social media. So if you don't like somebody, you go out there and you use your them. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's back <laughs> and in the day. by the way, they wouldn't tell you their face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, that, that's a strange thing. Even, even about the, that, that comment that I made up here in the UK, as in like, there was like neighbors of mine who live like 50 meters away from me, like writing in all these Facebook comments and Twitter comments. I, I, I'm not, I wasn't I obviously deleted my Twitter and wasn't on Facebook or whatever, but obviously you, you hear people saying, Oh, did you see what such such wrote about you or whatever? <laughs> but then I'd, I'd walk out the front of the house and they'd be standing there and you'd walk past them and I'd go, well, how are you? And Oh, well, Sean, nice to meet you. And I'm thinking, you were the guy last night, like sort of abusing me that's online, what but, I, but they wouldn't say it to me. That, Sean, by the way, I didn't agree with your point. I don't get it. I, that's why I believe that's not real. I yeah. think that's not real. Yeah. I think when I see that's why, like when I see negative comment on my, or this, this is how I deal with it, right? When I see negative comment, I just say to myself, "This is not real. That is not real." Because I, I yet to go outside and see someone that goes. Ah, Black Paddy, I don't like you. Like, they don't say that real life. They just come, hey, Black Paddy. I never bump into someone that just come up to my face and say they don't like me. Because whenever people comment negative stuff, it's just, it's just, it's just social media. Like, you know, they don't really yeah. come to your face. But you know what? I said, if we can teach anything to the kids, it's almost like, yeah, I would love kids to know that, yeah, it's great crack social media and things like that. But take it with a pinch of salt. Like, take it with a pinch of salt because there's going to be negative stuff throughout. You. There's going to be kids have to deal with enough sort of complications in life. But yeah, ho hopefully, as as time goes on, people will be educated enough to know that yeah, that, that, that there's a there's a world outside of that. There's, there's so much more powerful because most I, I believe most positive people probably don't. Whenever someone says something negative about you online. There's probably another 99 or 100 that aren't online that are that that that, that are being genuine and positive and who like you as well. So yeah. you have to realize that. And my my own take is that look, if like for me, I just believe whenever you see something negative on social media, is not to focus on negative. That's my own way of saying it. Like focus on the on the on the good ones because at the end of the day, even Jesus Christ was being hated upon. Like regardless of not everyone will like you. That's a fact of life. Whatever you do in this life, you won't be loved by everybody. And if you're loved by everybody, that means you're not doing the right thing. Probably, yeah, because you, you probably never tried things. Do you, under do you understand? You almost have to put you yourself have out to. there sometimes. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, totally. you have to get... I just do what I do and just don't read it. <laughs> you're lucky. At least, <laughs> at least yours is deleted. You're not going to wait. People are like, oh, yeah, see what someone just wrote about you last time. Twitter. I'm going, don't, 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 don't care. I don't want to know. Let it go. You know, just, just, focus on the just focus on the positive and let just dwell on the people that like you. And that's that's what it is. And, and why the book? Uh, you know what? I had such a, an incredible journey, Paddy, with, with, with playing. I was obviously so proud to play a sport and so proud with my family and my community and, and the Moy and Tyrone. Um, I sort of realized that I think, I, I think sort of closing that chapter of my life was something important. And, 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 and I think I did that with a book where I, I, I was able to capture all those memories and, 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 and good and bad times in, 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 a, in a book and that... Like I was very privileged that the opportunity to do. Most people probably don't do it, and and 
and it's a bit like whenever I was then doing that and I was talking through all the sort of trends of my life from primary school to secondary school and into playing for Tyrone and winning things. I, and it sounds a bit American here, like, but <laughs> I, 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 I started I start to realise probably more about the person I am and, and why I did things because I think anyone involved in high-level sport, they always talk about like being in a bubble and whenever you're in that bubble, you don't see anything else that's going on around you and, and, and you're just like on a, like a hamster wheel. So being able to talk about sort of big experiences through that time and I started to then connect a lot of dots. It was just like going, yeah, I understand why I made that decision. I understand why I didn't play well there. I understand why I did play well there. I understand why my family was always saying to me that I was disengaged with them or why I was distracted because, you know, I playing things through in my mind and stuff. So it's just very privileged. I had the chance to do that. Um, I got a few quid for it as well, which always helps. But <laughs> at, at, at the same time, it, it was it's just, just lovely to be able to capture all those good memories and, and some not so good but still they're part of me as a person so being able to capture that in the book and, and have it down there in black and white be honest with you I, I i still haven't read it i i have one <laughs> copy in my house and this is hand in my heart i haven't read it um and and uh i i i i'd say probably someday i probably will sit down and read it but I, to know it's there and to know that it's able to capture the good and the bad and um and and those experiences of, of my life was 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 pretty cool so that's really so interesting really now i'd like to read a book and where can people get this book find a book i don't know who amazon probably <laughs> <laughs> you're probably well discounted this stage you can probably get it for next to nothing get a used one a paperback one. oh no wait. no really it's, it's actually good to to see that you can actually like you know reflect on your life and see why and what's and stuff like that did that come with age and stuff like that do you, do you just like is this something you've always had or is it the older you got the wiser you became and you just kind of like you know like yeah I, th I think it's just the more experiences have been through and and it it's a bit like like i, I remember I, I struggled with like sleeping when i was a kid um i've been lying in bed at night and I, I always wondered why i couldn't sleep and and then get very angry about it and you know, it would affect me then the next day in school and, and I had that same problem with sport. And it's probably only then whenever I realized and I started to like, uh, I, actually with, with the sleep thing, I remember it was, it was a, a national, like a national final. We were playing Dublin, I think it was 2013. And I never slept for one minute the night before. And I got up, I got up the next morning and said to my wife, I, I'm going to have a horrible game here today. I'm not going to play well. And she said, no, like she's a doctor, she's a GP. And she said, Look, adrenaline will get you through anything and don't 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 panic don't 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 put yourself under so much pressure and i went out and had one of the best games i ever played and from that moment on i was like why did i stress myself and it's i beat myself up for 10 20 years of my life thinking if you don't sleep then you have a poor performance and you bit again you build something up in your head that that isn't there it doesn't exist and ever since that i've never had that problem so it's just again you, you encounter something that's a bit of a challenge in your life you realize you know what i can get over that that's that's fine i can deal with that whatever happens happens so yeah i think it's through just through all those experiences and i suppose i bet like what you mentioned earlier about what's the secret to things i think the secret for me anyway has been trying everything just just do everything mm. a bit like jim carrey movie yes man yeah anyone asks me to do anything it's yeah, yeah. yeah i'll give it a go i'll give it a go do i want to do half them no i probably don't yeah. but i come away from them all thinking you know that I've learned something there, you know, I've learned something, I've made a friend, I've made a connection, it might help in business, it's made me a better person, it's made me reflect better, so the more I do, the more I, the more I realise the type of person I am, things I like, the things I don't like, things are good for me, the things are good for my family, just just try it all. Yeah, and you, just, to, just to touch on that, how did you, how did you uh, like, cure the sleeping thing? What did, did re re realizing that it didn't matter, once I realised that I could function without sleeping, then I realized, then I was able to rest and relax so much better. Because right. I, had a, I had a block in my head saying to me, you have a big exam tomorrow, you have a match tomorrow. If you don't have eight hours sleep, you're going to be, you're going to fail that exam. You're going to lose that match. It's all going to be your fault. So I built, I built this scenario up in my head. And when I realized it wasn't the case, mm. then I never worried about it anymore. <laughs> and I sleep was asleep fine. Oh, so, that's so cool. You know, I suppose I just you just learn more about 
myself and and what my triggers were and once i realized that yeah that wasn't a big deal then i, I stopped putting myself under pressure so it was, a, mi- it was a mind team it was All a right. mindset, oh, yeah, so cool. mindset and um how does it feel like holding the sam cup <laughs> pretty cool in fairness yeah. like yeah uh, uh, particularly whenever Tyrone hadn't won it and been part of that first team and, and beaten like that that day I, I, I can still visualize and think back to that that exact moment of the final whistle went 2003 and and, and we'd just beaten Armagh and just you know, it was just like it's almost like the whole world stopped for about 10 seconds you, yeah, just, you just sort of looked up I remember looking up in the sky and thinking this is like a pinnacle of this the sport that I play and because we had never won it like my granddad and this probably put it into context for me. My, my granddad was 84 and he had been to every Ireland final for 50 years. He, he, t- he worked in the trains, net- he worked in the train station just outside the Moy. And he had be- he, because he had worked in the trains, he got like free train travel and he went to every All Ireland final for 50 years. Never thinking that Trone, Trone had never obviously won it. Um, we won it in 2003. I remember bringing the Sam Maguire out to his house and, and he, he grabbed and hold the cup. And, and like my dad is a real big strong man he's like shovel hands he's huge and, and my granddad was the same he was a real big strong man with huge hands you know, broke your hand every time he, he shook it but I remember giving him Sam Maguire and I, I'd never seen to this day my, by the way my dad has never said to me Sean you played well Sean I'm proud of you he, my dad's never hugged me he's never shook my hand he doesn't show emotion even though I know he loves me I know I love him but my granddad was exactly the same and I handed my granddad the Sam Maguire Cup and he just like was stunned and shocked and I could just see tears starting to run out of his eyes and I remember thinking to myself I was only 19 or 20 at this stage I never realised the, the sort of the power of it and I remember like I had to go to like a nursing home after afterwards so you know you, you only had the cup for like a day so I had like different visits to do and local people in the community had said me should call in the cup I'd love to get a picture with you and stuff so the guy's like, oh, granddad, I'm going to have to go here. Like after he held it for like about 10 minutes constantly. And I literally had to wrestle that cup off. And I was like, come on, granddad, <laughs> I have to go. I have to go. Oh, but you know what, Paddy? He, that was like November 2003. And granddad died in February 2004. God rest and, his soul. And, and I, I hold that moment as one of the most precious moments in, in my life. Like I still, it's still, it's, it, uh, I, I could see him sitting almost where you're sitting here now and thinking to myself, how, how privileged was I to be able to do that to my granda in his last few months of his life and, and the power of seeing him that's the only ever time I ever saw him show emotion and he, he, he showed emotion when he knew his grandson was able to bring him the Sam Maguire Cup so no you know what to have that influence and impact in someone was, was pretty cool like yeah that is unreal, man. Wow, that is crazy, man. I would like to hold it, but I've never held a Sam Maguire Cup <laughs> There's before. There's time for you yet, man. We'll <laughs> <laughs> get you in that Dublin team before I long. Do, I said it, <laughs> Five in a row or six in a row. <laughs> no, that's actually pretty interesting, man. I'm really, like that's I, like you know to make your to make your parents proud is something that you know it'd be my dream. But my dad passed away anyway when I was fourteen, and uh, I never I don't know what my granddad did to be honest with you. Um, it's 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 a very great thing to actually do something to that makes your like your parent proud. It's it's yeah, it's yeah. a it's a good it's a good feeling. It gives you a very great kind of yeah, like to, you know. To be honest, I'd say that's probably most of what I've done in, in my life. I I still hold like my mom and dad would be the people that I hold their opinions the most no matter what anyone's status is um they they're the ones that even yet would come home to me and say Sean you did wrong or Sean you why did you say that or Sean you shouldn't have done that and and they're while well, well, I don't care who, who who says anything online whenever they say something it, it means a lot to me no, so, yeah, yeah. no matter what age you are they're still your parents I swear regardless you, the wooden spoon still affects you regardless <laughs> you can, you're, not, you're not too old for the wooden it, spoon uh, it wasn't even the wooden spoon whenever, <laughs> whenever my dad's got like hands like shovels it, it, it was the hands you were afraid of it wasn't the spoon <laughs> <laughs> and was it different was it different playing in the north and the south yeah yeah it is and, and it was strangely uh, Culturally, I would say there is a little bit of a difference, and strangely, then whilst we're we're very up north, we're very like we're we're very parochial. We'll we'll scrap with one another very quickly. It, it's kind of a weird dynamic because then whenever whenever I see an Ulster team sometimes go down and play Dublin or play Kerry or play down in Croke Park, 
um we like and it's come from parents and my grandparents as well we were always taught to then support the northern team it was almost like a, a little bit of a like a siege mentality whereby and, and equally i'll be sitting uh with with guys in dublin and they'll be like oh use nordies up there you know use use your use your different breed almost <laughs> so you know they do see there's still a little bit of a cultural difference it's all said with a bit of tongue-in-cheek and a bit of crack but yeah, there there is still a little bit of difference. Like we still are the the, the Nordies and they still are the Southerners, and, and we <laughs> always have that little bit of struggle. But you know, it, it's a healthy struggle, and beneath it all, it's there's a real deep land respect about about GA um, beneath it all. And whenever you have that sort of connection to GA, that's that's all about amateur and family and communities. It doesn't really matter what color or creed or where you're from it's just about gs yeah, about pulling everyone together under the same banner and that's that's, that's really special and then um, so what does uh, what, hold on you're saying about colors like, <laughs> <laughs> an orange color doesn't suit buddy like you, you've got a black sign behind, or, or, you've got a black potty red sign behind you i think it should be a red and white red and white. Got. <laughs> and what what does mean what does mean your worst game game oh god there's, there's probably been a few yeah like uh, actually i remember like playing our man that all ireland final and even though i did okay i missed like a big goal opportunity um uh, so i kind of still hold that in my head uh i actually had a one of the best games i ever played was in 2008 all ireland final but I, I had a chance to score a goal in that game and i missed it and i probably still hold that as, as a huge regret getting sent off in that game they ended up going for like a seven hour walk against mayo in 2000 whatever it was, 15 or 16, that was a real dark day for me as well. But yeah, I've, I've had loads of dark days, but yeah, you, you, know, you know, whenever you, whenever you realise and you see other sports people, you hear the quotes about Michael Jordan missing more shots than he ever scored and you listen to about Cristiano Ronaldo and all the abuse that he's got in his life, you realise that's what all sort of people who put themselves out there go through. They go through those those difficult moments and, you know, the, the people that, are able to deal with those the best or are quite often the people that, that, that end up having having good success. And yeah, I've just been very lucky that I've, I've had success I've had. All right. And what's what's next? What's your what's your next project on Horizon? What's, what's <laughs> There's the always plan? something. I, I'm I'm currently playing basketball no in the Northern Ireland Basketball League. Uh, All right. uh I was back playing with my club training with my club last night, playing football again. I had I've kind of retired three or four times at this stage, but yeah, the basketball was called off last night and I decided we'll go back and play a little bit. So yeah, the manager's been on to me today, but trying to go back to that. I still do a bit of T V work with RTE. Um the business is getting bigger and stronger every single day and getting a real great kick and buzz out of that. Um so yeah, no, there's there's always something and I've no doubt like I'm I'm one of these people they're they're, they're the more you do, the more opportunities that just fall in front of you of different investments and other businesses as well. So, yeah, I'm just one of these guys. That I just love life. I, I love, I love, I love that feeling of waking up every morning and saying to myself, you know what, there'll be something that comes across me today that I'll get a kick out of and that will be an opportunity and I'll get an interest and a passion. And I think if you hold loads of interests and passions and and whatnot you know you don't you don't see the days go and the days go quickly and and, mm. and, and you genuinely learn m m more often than not enjoy the days no way man you're a legend bro i love you so much man you've literally like like sitting down here listening to you and listening to all you've been through man it has actually like inspired me personally uh, man, like just very lucky you've had it to be honest like you know i think like, but like yourself a anyone who gets passionate about what to do um yeah just just very privileged and blessed that i can i can do things i enjoy wow that's pretty good look i just want to say thank you so much for taking your busy time out and coming to my podcast and showing uh, me love i mean i really want to appreciate that thank you so much for actually coming completely honored man and i've no doubt this will be the first of of, of many brilliant podcasts oh, thank you uh, that, thank that you very much in, so look fair play to you all right thank you so much thank you sean and uh ladies and gentlemen i just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this beautiful amazing podcast and let's listen and I'm really grateful. Thank you so much, all the northern, the southern people for showing the Black Party love, for making this possible. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I can get more amazing guests like this legend over here. And it was been great. Good luck and God bless. Come. <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, okay. Jake, get us big man. Okay. Oh, man, because I'll suck him, man, later, bro. Thank you so much, bro. Well done. All right, I want to take a picture with you, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs>